What is a narcissist and how do they emotionally manipulate in relationships? That's what we'll be exploring on Looking Glass, Pressured to Prosperous, the podcast for entrepreneurial artists who want to be fully self-supporting through their creative ventures. I'm Joanna Garzilli, author of Scarlet's Confession, Tales of a British Psychic, a novel that is a mix of spirituality and sex. By the end of our time together, you're going to have a greater understanding of one, the emotional roller coaster of narcissistic abuse, two, expressive arts as a healing tool, three, the first step to turn your creations into a calling. Tina Turner had popped into my mind because she had passed away not that long ago. I remember my mum always played her album. I found this article from People magazine by Jen Junot. It says, I was living a life of death, Tina said. I didn't exist. I didn't fear him killing me when I left because... I was already dead. When I walked out, I didn't look back. She said she felt like just a shadow in the mid-1960s during their Ike and Tina Turner review success, telling people Ike took care of everything. The sound, the band, hiring people, management and money, while she was expected to carry out tasks like cooking breakfast for the band at 4am. Later in their marriage, Tina found strength in studying and practicing Buddhism, but Ike's physical abuse only intensified. When Ike saw me chanting, she said, the veins in his face popped out. He didn't want to hear about anything that would give me power. Ike could be very loving, Tina said, but it didn't come without strings. He helped a lot of people in trouble, but you owed him your life. He didn't give freely. What is a narcissist and how do they emotionally manipulate in relationships? Narcissists have an inflated sense of self-importance, a lack of empathy and a need for constant validation. Their abusive behaviours often include gaslighting, belittling remarks, sabotage and pathological lying that can leave a partner, child employee, depressed, anxious, and questioning their own judgment. Common red flags you may be with a narcissist are, they are very nice to you when they want something, but quickly devalue you, take more than they give in relationships, lack remorse and shift blame, and present different personas publicly and privately. When rebuilding your life after narcissistic abuse, Creative pursuits including writing, singing, acting, dancing, painting or design can be a powerful tool in the self-healing process. Expressing your authentic experiences into works that resonate with others can help heal soul fragmentation and calm emotions. Turning your creative ideas into a business can also build self-confidence and self-reliance. But narcissists will not be supportive of your goals if it takes attention away from them or doesn't serve their needs in some way. They may gaslight you into believing your talents lack merit, actively sabotage opportunities, or emotionally and financially control you, or threaten to cut you off financially if you go after your big dreams. Healing the impact of narcissistic abuse is critical before an artistic entrepreneurship journey can succeed and for you to enjoy that success. Because if you haven't detached from that narcissist, whatever success that you create will then fall away. It will happen at the subtle energy level because of an unconscious self-sabotage. Narcissistic abuse 
is an emotional roller coaster. On that roller coaster, you are going to go through feelings of self doubt, walking on eggshells, loss of identity, highs and lows. Because the question comes up why would you stay connected, involved with a narcissist? Because they can adore you. They can give you attention in a way that feels amazing, that puts you on cloud nine. And as soon as they give you that attention, that adoration, they can take it away and they can become cruel and mean. Having a sense that you have no identity without the approval of that person. And that's the beauty of art. It can help you get in tune with the fragmented parts of yourself. It can allow you to be able to get back to your soul's strength. There is a strong likelihood that if you are an artist, you have at least one narcissist in your life who has affected you, who has hurt you. The artists who have been the most successful have typically had some type of narcissist in their life, whether it be a parent, a sibling, or a teacher, some authority figure. And then because that was unresolved and they wanted to be able to get answers to why they were unlovable, what they did wrong, that they then find themselves attracted to a partner who is a narcissist. They're trying to work that out, to figure that out, to get some type of closure or to be able to figure out how to mend that relationship, which with a narcissist, the only way to fix it is to do what the narcissist wants and do it on their terms. Expressive arts as a healing tool. The arts are a healing tool. They are a way for you to be able to process trauma. The parts of you that weren't listened to. Whenever you tried to speak and you were called names, you were told to shut up, you were told that you were worthless, or you were given the silent treatment. As you focus on picking up the paintbrush, the microphone, the pen, using the keyboard, taking to the stage, picking up a camera, whatever that form, that medium to create your art, when you engage with it, each time you engage with it, you gain more and more a sense of self. It was one of the reasons I wrote Scarlet's Confession, Tales of a British Psychic, because I didn't understand that I had deep abandonment issues. I'm not going to go into details about all of those things now. But what I did was I just started off whenever I got triggered because someone was late to meet me or there was an answer I couldn't get clarity on in my life, I would pick up a journal and I would start to write. Whether I was waiting at the bus stop or I was on the train or I couldn't go to sleep at night or when I woke up in the middle of the night, I would write. And that turned into Scarlet's Confession. It was a way for me to be able to see another part of myself a suppressed part of myself, the shadow part of myself. And that shadow was there because there was so much pain from a significant narcissistic relationship in my life. The next step is turning your creations into a calling. Once you've created art that resonates and Ultimately, it begins with creating the art for oneself. The more you focus on creating, for me, it was writing. It started off as journaling and it turned into a book. I'm going to adapt it and make it into a movie. It was very healing to publish Scarlet's Confession. I think that 
when you trust in the process and you stay true to the art, the business that you're creating, there's a natural pathway that leads you to be able to monetize that art so that you can be fully self-supporting through your creative ventures. For each one of us, it is a different journey. There are ebbs and flow to that. I want to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes of Scarlett's confession. At the time, I was going through a lot of ups and downs. Externally, in my day-to-day life, I looked like I had things together, but I was struggling a lot inside. I know many people who go through that experience. It doesn't matter where you are in life, if you are focused on growing in some capacity, you are always going to find yourself coming up against some new challenge or some type of limiting belief. The premise for Scarlett's confession is if Scarlett Ray is such a wonderful psychic, then why is her life a bloody mess? 30-year-old Scarlett is about to marry the wrong man, has a mountain load of debt, and eats chocolate croissants whenever she is depressed, which is a lot. Scarlett miraculously lands a job as a psychic TV host. The only catch is she has to share the studio with manipulative porn producers. I'm just going to stop there a moment. Someone who recently was listening to the audiobook of Scarlett's Confession said something along the lines to me on threads of, this is so wild. This this can't be true, can it? I started chuckling to myself because life imitating art, imitating life. That was the first book that I wrote, but I didn't publish it for many, many years. The first book I published was Unleash the Psychic in You, How to Trust Your Intuition for Successful Decision Making. That was a self-help how-to book on how to trust your intuition. And when I published Big Miracles with HarperCollins, that was a very classical, well-written book on spirituality, practical spirituality. I think that even though I had written Scarlet's Confession first, I couldn't publish that first if I wanted to be taken seriously as a spirituality self-help author and be able to be respected within that realm. But the things that occurred in Scarlet, she was spiritual but very unspiritual and felt that about the world around her, bringing this full circle about narcissists. I was in so much pain from a key significant narcissistic relationship. Writing Scarlet's Confession allowed me to heal enough, even though I hadn't published the book, to be able to have the courage to fly out to America on my own and start over. And from there, I built a very successful career within spirituality. I got married, have a beautiful son, and I feel very, very blessed. I still go through challenges in my life. I still feel the wounds of this narcissistic relationship, and I'm still doing the daily work, the daily spiritual work. Without creativity, the shadow part of myself would be all-consuming. So for me, art is medicine. I don't want to have to focus on the monetization side of it. I just want to do the art for the sake of doing art. I wonder if you can relate to that. I'm also learning that to be fully self-supporting through one's creative ventures, it is important to be proud and say, this is good work. Here it is. 
I would love for you to be able to experience it, to be able to buy that book, watch that TV show, buy that painting, download of a certain song. It feels so good to have one's art supported and to support another person's art. Thank you for listening and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you.